Hey ladies and gents, Spazzy here and welcome back to our little let's play of Vorian, episode 21. So, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, uh, for a moment there, I actually considered uh, looking at some of the mods that we currently have on Steam, and the two that I found the most interesting was the All Turrets Independent, and also the no independent targeting penalty. I like the idea that where we start to make these ships bigger and bigger, like we did with, for example, Mr. Krabs from the previous Let's Play, um, using manual targeting becomes not so much as a problem per se, but it makes the game kind of troublesome. And so, considering the independent targeting turrets for some reason, have a 50% uh, damage reduction, I thought that perhaps it's a, you know, it might be an interesting idea. The reason why I think the damage reduction does not make any sense is simply because using auto-targeting turret, uh, turrets is already kind of problematic, so to speak, and it really doesn't make sense from a gameplay perspective that a crewed ship where you actually have gunners and such, for some reason requires input from the player to actually aim them. It should be an option, but yeah. So, I had an idea, but I don't know. I didn't go for it, because I think it would require another vote, and I'm pretty sure this one would probably be split in half, but not exactly sure. Alright, so, regarding the pl previous Let's Play, uh, we created a better version of our mining drone. I do admit that um, the way that I distributed my mining turrets does not really, you know, help the current situation, so to speak. And so, I think that what's gonna happen is I will need to focus on getting new turrets in general, and flushing out the ones that Drone 2 and 3 currently have. Not right now, no, but in the near future, that will need to be a thing. Now, as for today, I'm considering what to do during this time, because right now we are, again, just waiting for the amount of um, resources uh, that, you know, we currently have. As already said before, I'm looking at a goal of 100,000 nanite uh, and 50,000 each for both iron and titanium, and then I can uh, then I can commission a actual ship from one of these shipyards. Uh, one of the ideas that I genuinely had right now is to replace the jump range, the you know the quantum hyperspace upgrade, and replace it with the object detector, just so we can kind of not waste our time, but I think that those items are more or less destined for our main ship, so to speak, and so I think that would be kind of cheating. So in instead of what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let those guys mine, and I'm going to focus on mapping out the rest of this place, and also gonna explore some of the green sectors. Of course, we are going to have to do something about the yellow ones over time because, well, that's where you get all of your stuff from. And I'm pretty sure that considering the amount of, you know, credits in general that you get from selling these things now, I think we should be able to actually build our first stations relatively soon and, you know, if it's not something we could do in the first nation, it's definitely going to be something we can do here. So, for example, right here, I can claim this thing, and I can sell, uh, I can sell it for like 154,000, and that is quite a lot. And so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. Now, I don't really want to explore too much, mainly because since I'm not running the um, object detector, I'm probably doing a disservice by mapping out these things and then never returning to them even though there is probably 
the secret stash is here. Or I could create the ship from what we currently have and go from there. So we do have some choices. It's just that I'm not exactly sure which one would be the right one. So let's actually go do that. Let's... Uh, we do have a shipyard right here. I'm going to very quickly jump to it. And I'm going to quickly take a look at what can we actually make right now with the amount of stuff that we currently have. Because the problem is, I can set the... Uh, this, uh, the shipyard has that setting of, like, from what do you want this ship to be made out of? And I can set it to, you know, Neonite. But the problem there is that... Let's go build a ship, right? So... Um, I'm going to place everything to the max. I'm going to set it to, sorry, not training and neonite. And as you can see, it still does use quite a bit of iron. So there we go. 13, 23, uh, 20, 20, 28. You can see it kind of changes the amount of stuff that we get. And this would be the ship that we are left with. So if you take a look at the stats, I think it was kind of similar to what... No, actually it's not similar. I still have it right here. So the Indecisive had 35,000 effective hull. So since this ship is actually equipped with the shield, so that's going to be 14 plus 10. And, well, needless to say, we're missing 10,000 effective stuff. Um, this thing would also be not nearly as long, because um, 684 meters in length, as opposed to our 821 with the Indecisive. But that is the carrier. Like, I want to see what other... Like, what other variations of this design that we currently have? We also have a freighter that I'm going to just tell you right now, it looks really, really strange. And for some reason, it's even less. So, um, well, let's see. Uh, there's also the miner that, as already said, I'm probably not going to use because the design itself is way too close to what we have with the indecisive. And last but not least, we have the ship. And I must say that the ship design for these guys looks very, very strange. And also, for some reason, this thing does not have any shield at all. So I kind of wonder, okay, so now we set it to ship. And it actually does generate with shield. I wonder if the starting volume has anything to do with the thing that it actually generates. So let's take a look at this. Um, and let's just start increasing it. I'm looking at the hull plus shield rather than... Oh, what what's going on? Oh, that was strange. Okay, um, I don't actually want to do that. Attacking civilian ships on my own, by like, automatically, is really, really not something I want to do. Okay, so let's go back. Um, Neonite, zero, and let's see, hull and shield. We're just going to keep on going until we hit that 35k total. Okay, this is reaching close to that, but you can see that it, it's it's probably going to be somewhere around that region that I already said, that, hey, I will need about 100,000 Neonite and like 50 from each. Okay, so this would bring us up to 40,000 effective, both hull and shield, and then would we we will be stuck with a ship that has 
absolutely nothing in terms of mass or anything else. So my question right now is, perhaps the best idea right now would to be to actually buy the Neonide. Although, to be fair, we are slowly getting there. But it's gonna take us some time. Also, the one thing that it's obviously a bad thing about this ship and, you know, this design uh, generator in general, is it it's actually using a whole bunch of regular hull, which in the first ship was not a bad thing at all. But in this place, you know, in this case, it's probably not wet, not too good. Also, system upgrade slots 6. That's perfectly fine. And we can replace the cargo hold with, you know, other things. Alright. So that is the overall idea. I'm going to let my mining ships run for a while. I'm going to... Look at about 70,000. I'm going to return to this uh, thing a little bit later. Uh, the whole volume is 3775. Now that, I'm actually going to write down. I'm not exactly sure if we're going to get this exact design with this exact cost again. But hopefully by that time, I've, al I've already actually improved my relationships with, the, uh, relations with these guys. And... Uh, you know, hope for the best. Okay, so this is kind of strange. Um, it looks like that I've just hit the western question mark border. Looks like it. It actually leads to a place that is actually hostile to me. The question is, is that place hostile to these guys as well? I guess one way to find out. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Like, just a reminder, this ship has a hull of 1,000. So it is quite literally 35 times as squishy as the Indecisive. And to be fair, when we were cleaning out those pirate sectors, the Indecisive was actually taking damage. So that's something to keep in mind. I think it's a little bit too early to say what kind of um, what kind of loadout I will want for this future ship. And by the way, I will be posting the you know kind of input slash vote. Yeah, this is very strange. And I will be posting a vote about the possible names somewhere once we actually create the ship. So that's going to be actually the uh, name of the new, or rather, well, the new name of the continuation of that Let's Play. So now I'm kind of wondering, did I just jump into a red system or a not red? Okay, that's good. And that's actually pretty darn good. Because losing Jerry is not really what I want. Oh yeah, by the way, um, it looks like our relations with these guys are now good instead of neutral. So that's definitely something very good. Okay, so I just entered a hazard zone. Not sure what that is about. This is the first time I actually got here. Oh, wow. So I kind of wonder, are these the battles that have uh, been the result of them being close to these guys? Are they hostile to them? It is something that I do not know. And since I don't really know the ship design or the color palette, I can't really tell by the racks.
Oh yeah, by the way, once we reach Trinium, I will, in fact, want to at least try out the boarding mechanic. It is something that I do want to give it a chance, at least. Man, isn't this a freaking pea soup? I really wish I had that object detector right about now. He said as he just randomly finds a secret stash. Okay, you know what? Let's be smart about this. I'm actually wondering... What can I find in this sort of thing? And is it going to spawn like... Pirates? Oh no, never mind. A chameleon? Now, if only we were actually doing smuggling, then those things would actually be useful. But, we're not, and so they're not. The one sad thing about all of this is that I will probably have to return to these places once I have the ship and once I have the object scanner again. Because I'm pretty sure I'm leaving a substantial amount of stuff behind simply because I don't see it. We do have a shipyard here, and we do have 71,000. Oh, and we do have a equipment dealer. We're getting there. We are slowly but surely getting to the point where um, sometime in the next 10 minutes, I guess, of in-game time, I'll have to go back to their capital and see what kind of ship I can create. Because the whole idea was to start with a ship that had the same stats as the previous one, and kind of figure it out from there. Okay, I think we found the next order, actually. Let's double check. Okay, and just like that, we have found that side of the galaxy. Uh, Let's keep going. 15, uh, 1500 more Neonite, and I'll go back. I'm probably gonna, uh, I'm probably gonna leave Jerry in, um, one of those salvage yards. Give him something to do. And from there, we'll figure out what to do. So, these guys that we're currently in neighbors with, the Buccaneers, right? There's something very interesting about them right now. So, take a look at this. They have the opportunistic trait, which means that no reputation loss when witnessing attacks on helpless ships. So, if it was the other way around, if these guys here, if the church was actually hostile to me, and those guys were neutral, I would be able to just go in and attack the church's trading ships during their convoys to the buccaneers without any repercussions. Or at least that's how I interpret that. So this actually marks um, most of its northern, northwestern region, which you know, good thing. Yeah, there we go. So this is actually where the buccaneers are, but also, um, that's where our missions are. So, we will eventually have to do something about the relationships with these guys. At least set them to ceasefire. You know, just 
Out of curiosity. Okay, somewhere between two to four million credits. To be fair, that's relatively reasonable, actually. Okay, ladies and gents, we are nearing our 100,000 Neonite mark. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to look for a scrapyard. And there we go. So one is over there, but I'm more interested in the ones closer to the center of the galaxy. So it's going to be this one. So, Jerry, I need you to start making your way towards it. Uh, I didn't set it to um, salvage just yet, because first of all, we have nothing to salvage with, and we would still need to actually buy the salvage token. But yeah, as for us, um, we're going to actually go back to Prime. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to enter my drone next to the mining drones, and just, you know, jump into Prime from there. And we're going to build our first ship. You know, my relationships with these guys are actually good. Are they good? Yes, yes, they are good. They are just good. So my question is, can I... Nope. Excellent. I need excellent relationships. Okay, um, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to sit here and idle a little bit until we get to 100,000 uh, Neonite. And after that, we're gonna create that first shippy of ours. So I actually went away for a slightly longer period of time than I thought I would. But it looks like we just mined out that whole system and we're at 96,000, so my idleness didn't really bring a lot uh, to the situation at hand. So first things first, I don't know whether or not I can actually get it with full crew and a captain, given our current set of, you know, uh, the current set of uh, reputation. So, uh, the previous volume that we had was 3,775. So something like this. Oh, I did wrong. Um, Neonite, and now we set it to three seven seven five, and there we go. So we actually have this amount of stuff, and it looks like we will have to use a carrier. Now, as for the hull and the shield, for some reason, this one actually managed to generate a much better version. This thing is way, way more powerful than what we had with the previous one. It also costs a lot more. So, I'm gonna call this thing the Temporarius for now, and let's see if I can even create that thing yet. Nine minutes. And that actually bumped us um, our reputation up for quite a bit. So that's good. All right. So that's good. And there it is. The Temporius. All right, ladies and gents. Let's have a look peek at this behemoth, at this boy of chunkiness. Ah yes, he is large and in charge. And he is also without a reconstruction token, so let's... I wonder how much does it cost? Yeah, a million. Almost. 
a million. This is a big shippy. Holy hell. That's fine. Because we are going to displace everything back that we had previously. There we go. And two more. One was this. I'm pretty sure the second was this. There we go. All right. Ladies and gents, I think we are back in business. For the most part. Let's very quickly take a look at the overall design for this thing, because... Um... Concern. Well... I can already say that it has, um... A lot of generation, that's good. Uh, integrity field. It has absolutely no integrity fields. Holy hell. Okay. Uh, view. All blocks. Uh, cargo bay. Yeah, I'ma just... I'ma just... Just... Let me just quickly fix that. Yeah, that just probably bumped up our um, energy consumption, but screw that. Also, generator. Let's just replace everything else with a generator. Like, I don't really care about cargo just yet. Well, let's go for all stats. Um, let's see. Cargo holds zero. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. I mean, we're not going to leave it completely zero. I'm not stupid. I'm just mentally challenged. So... Oh wow, this thing actually does have gyros. And inertia dampeners. Turret bases for turrets, that's good. A lot of edginess. You know... The most terrible part is that it's just, it's just edges and just, like it's 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 just an, an edge. It's it's not even armor. That's the terrible part about this. So uh, hull, that is a lot of hull. Okay, so um, I think I'm just going to turn these two parts over here into cargo hold, just for the sake of having cargo hold in the first place. But yeah, this is going to be a... an interesting experience, to say the least. And a Neodive Mining Turret. Good! Okay, I think Jerry is going to be fine. Alright, ladies and gents. Um, we also ran out of stuff over here. So I'm just going to have all my drones go there and uh, mine over there. And we're going to go back. Alright, so this is going to be the stop until the next episode. And in the next episode, it's probably going to be a build log specifically for the ship itself. Hopefully by that time you guys have already voted on the name. And, uh, yeah. Pretty much that. Alright, ladies and gents. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.